With the first two days of the NFL draft in the books, running back is likely in play for the Eagles on day three. Let's check out one of my favorite players available. Tracy is a running back that is relatively inexperienced, but he had fantastic production and analytics to go along with that in his limited time at running back. He was a high school running back. He switched to receiver. I'm guessing he saw how running back contracts were going and he wanted to make a move. I don't know his exact reason for wanting to switch positions, but he during his time at receiver, he made a fair amount of big explosive impact plays when he did get to play receiver, mainly his freshman year at Iowa. But after that, he didn't get to play too often. He would make flash plays every now and again throughout the years. He transferred to Purdue. He tried to play receiver, a mix of receiver and running back his first year at Purdue. And then the running back coach said, hey, you're a running back. And they moved him to running back. And I thought for a player that didn't really have college experience at the position, he was pretty good. He was an extremely efficient runner, first of all, if we look at the analytics. Looking at the final at his final season, of the 98 backs that have been drafted or likely will be drafted since 2020, he ranks third in missed tackle forced rate, he ranks seventh in yards after contact, and he ranks 13th in explosive run rate. And that's playing behind a Purdue offensive line, where he ranked 74th in yards before contact. So a lot of the guys that are in the top of all those metrics, they, they have average like three to four yards before contact. Two of the top guys in this year's class, Marshawn Lloyd and Jalen Wright, they average between three and four yards before contact. That's crazy. So they have all this runway to work. And they're, and Tracy is still able to put up better numbers on a carry-to-carry -carry basis. He was extremely fun to watch on film. I'm pretty probably just going to throw up Tracy highlights for the rest of the time if you're watching this on YouTube. He's got great mobility with fluid hips, knees, and ankles that allows him to the ability to stop and cut on a dime. And he has great feet that allow him to minimize his gather steps before cutting up field. And he has incredible contact balance. And that might be the most impressive feature of his game. When he's running through up the middle or just through the line of scrimmage, he's running through arm tackles. And then he'll run through another tackle. And he'll bounce off a guy and keep his feet and keep moving down the field. He is such a hard guy to bring down. It's almost Alvin Kamara-like. Not going to say he is Alvin Kamara, obviously, but his contact balance is one of the best that I've seen, definitely in this draft class. His vision and ability to stay within the confines of the designed run was fairly good for someone that has the experience level that he has at the position. I expected him to be running into the back of his lineman a lot or just trying to bounce runs too often. I think there are times where he could be a little bit better pressing the hole longer or potentially manipulating second level defenders to set himself up with an easier run lane. But those are things you can teach. You can't really teach his elusiveness or his contact balance. You can to a certain degree, but a large part of that is God-given. But when he gets to the second and third level of the defense, he's almost seeing two steps ahead. He's really, really good in space. He's able to make one guy miss and then string together another move to make another guy miss. Now, he, like I said, he was a former receiver with a lot of impressive, flashy plays. But his receiving skills are different than most running backs coming out of college. Even with a guy like Jameer Gibbs last year, go back and watch discussions about him. And people are saying, oh, this guy can run routes like a receiver. But I never really saw receiver routes. He might have been lined up out wide and he ran a hitch. Newsflash, pretty much every running back that lines up out wide is going to run a hitch or a go or a slant. That's pretty much it. But Tracy has run real routes he has run digs over the middle he's crossing routes out routes he knows how to or at least he has a better understanding than a typical running back of how to find the soft spots in zone coverage how to set up the defender at the top of the route based on the leverage and spacing that they're giving you he can be a true matchup nightmare in the nfl just based on his previous experience at running back and at receiver he's a guy that you could throw in a Kyle Shanahan offense where they like to play their positionless football, and that's a nightmare to game plan for. Defenses try to come out and play certain personnel based on what the offense is throwing out on the field, but if you're throwing out a running back that can go line up in the slot or line up at number one and run uh, a dig, that's a hard thing to match up with. You're, are you going to put a linebacker out there, or are you going to probably put a safety, or who knows, maybe even a corner? But on top of all of that, he has good athletic measurables as well. So he's not just a guy that's skilled. He's a good athlete. Now, his downsides or his 
weaknesses are his limited experience. Was this just a one-year wonder, his success at running back, or is there something more? I think there can be something more. I don't think you just lose the ability to bounce off guys like this. And I think he's a player that will probably get better as he gets more practice and more reps at the position. But a lot of his downside, like I mentioned earlier, he could probably press holes a little bit better or manipulate second-level defenders. Uh, he definitely can get better with running with lower pad level through the hole. But a lot of these are things that you that he can grow with. And probably the biggest downside is that he's going to be an older prospect. He'll be 25 late in the season. And at running back, I think we all know those guys age a little bit quicker. He's not going to hit free agency until he's 28. You're not really giving a 28-year-old running back a second contract unless they turn out to be a really, really high-end player. And even then, they're probably getting somewhat of a, a limited contract and they're a role player. But again, that's probably why he's going to be a later prospect. Not necessarily expecting him to be a second contract player, which is okay for picking a player that late. So I, I think it's kind of offset with, I think that's kind of baked into his price. Yeah. And I think at the very least, you're getting a special teams ace. This guy was a phenomenal kick returner. I He was, from what I've read, he was also a gunner, I believe, on special teams um, and excelled in that role. And now with the new kickoff rules, you could argue the value of that is even higher because he might be he he might be very well suited to flourish under the new kickoff rules where vision counts for a little bit. You probably want a little bit more bulk to your frame um, than the previous kickoff returners had, where they were more like slight frame guys with a lot of speed often. Um, so. If you're drafting a guy in the fourth round or later and you already know you're going to get some value out of him and he'll get on the field in some capacity, that's a win. And then if he can get on the field on offense and is kind of this chess piece, that's like gravy on top of the potato. So I I got to watch more Tracy because you got me really excited about him. Um, I've watched him a little bit and I liked what I saw. I was always thinking, I also thought about this guy uh, from Western Kentucky, Malachi Corley, he's projected to go in like the second round. He was the opposite, where he was a running back who became a receiver. And I was like, I'd rather just wait and get Tracy, who was uh, <laughs> a receiver who became a running back, um, who might be better in both phases of the game. Yeah, he was targeted downfield. I believe I'd, I should fact check myself on this later, but during... Tracy's time as a receiver, I'm pretty sure he was targeted downfield much more than Corley was, or at a much higher rate, I should say, than Corley was. Yeah, yeah. And he can be a guy that, like, he'll, he'll probably be a guy, like, Kellen Moore loves using end-around gadget, jet sweep kind of, kind of guys. Corley's can do, or not Corley, you got me all <laughs> thinking about the wrong player now. Tracy can do, <laughs> Tracy can do that kind of stuff. So at, at the very least, I think he has, he's going to have a role on the team. And also factor in, Gainwell's going to be on an expiring contract. They need to get a rookie running back. Or they need to get a, a, a rookie on a rookie contract at running back. And I think they haven't really gone out and signed anyone else. I think they picked up uh, a couple guys, but they seem to be more practice squad players than anything else in my eyes. Um, so I think it's setting up that they're probably going to take a running back, especially they have several fifth round picks i think you're looking in that range tracy could be that guy and and if we're talking about upside i mean i think you're getting a value on him because because of his age he's not going to go third round he's not going to maybe he goes fourth round but i highly doubt that you're getting a value on him because people aren't going to want to invest too much assets in a guy that is probably only going to play out one contract but he's probably going to be really good for his role in that one contract 